Welcome to Tea Time Tuesday. Hi all my friends. Let's settle in for about a half hour walk here. I'm Lark and I'm in Wisconsin Zone 5. And I'm going to take you for a walk through my perennial garden. And there's a few annuals thrown in. And come agains, which self-seed themselves. Here in Wisconsin, we have had hot and humid weather for the last week. And we cooled off today. And yesterday, probably in the high 70s, no, low 80s, low 80s. Oops, sorry. I was doing the gate. Here, we're getting ready for a rummage sale. I use these, or use these bird cages, old bird cages, for um, protecting my plants from bunnies, and then they look pretty. And an iron chair, I have four of those, heavy, and I dropped a pot in them so people can plant vegetables, because they have a deep root system, or a perennial. I got, I'm going to ask $25 for that, a chair. We'll see. They'll last forever. The scarlet, no, 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 hyacinth bean vine is going up. There it is. Where is it? Mm, right about there. Free. Okay. I'm pretty much about reseeders. And that hyacinth bean was a reseeder. Japanese beetles have arrived. And I pick a couple times daily and drop them into soapy, sudsy water. The pots are doing okay. With this heat, they started to pick up. But this is what Japanese beetles do in a couple hours. Can you see? They love cannas. They love burgundy-leafed plants. Dave just got done staining the deck. Moving everything off of there, him and I. That jade was so heavy. Starting to fill in. Mid-July. And I told you I'm trying the pencil cactus in the container. And then at the end of the season, I can just give those plants away. This canna has gotten huge. I like the burgundy leaf. Same with the flapjack. I will give those away. Okay. Can't walk too fast, but don't walk too slow, Lark, or you won't get through in 30 minutes. I told you last week the day lilies were starting to set bud. Well, some of them are blooming. Bee balm is awesome right now. This only gets about three hours of sun, but it lights up the shade area. A job of mine is, if you remember one of the first spring videos I did, and I had celandine poppy, well, I'm going to be throwing seed in there because behind this bee bomb are weeds. Chickweed, and I eat it, but I can't eat that much. So I will be throwing in uh, celandine poppy seeds. Okay. I have a sweet autumn on this dying Austrian clematis, and it gets white tiny flowers in late August. And I don't want it this year climbing all the way up the tree because then I can't enjoy the flowers. So I keep bringing it down and growing on itself so it will uh, bloom shorter. Trumpet vine tree is coming back. And, oops, I'm sorry, and setting bud.
I've been cutting down to the ground the geranium cranesbill that are drying up. Okay, someone, no, I won't talk about that right now. We'll do a tips and techniques on that. Yuccas, pretty bloom right now, just starting. Adds a nice white right there. I need that. The other white is the flea bane. Jacob Klein, Biba. I just got done spraying the garden with pepper spray. I haven't done it for over, oh, I bet you a week, maybe 10 days. This daylily is a, the Salome series, tiny, small, probably uh, only a three inches across. A few Asiatic lilies. Not many. Critters get them. Right now I'm making sure I also spray my asters so I get some blooms this year. The deer do like the asters. And I'll just show you the foliage of one. Let's see if I can. It's sunny, so I'm having a hard time. But they like those. I do have a castor bean, burgundy leaf castor bean, in here. But I don't know if it's going to amount to anything. Let's see. Right there. Aren't those gloriosos pretty? Those are come against. Some spider wart up yet. The ones that get more shade because they're still blooming without reseeding. Stella is still blooming. I don't get rebloom on her too often. Ligularia, the rocket, I had showed you, is down there. Getting ready to bloom. But I have one up here also, a smaller one, with a different leaf. The one down there has a big, like, palm heart-shaped leaf. This one has a serrated leaf. But it still gets a spiky flower on it. No, I haven't taken the time to take the flowers off, so the guy who made the comment about I shouldn't take the flowers off because of the birds and the butterflies. Oh, I have so many flowers. But I think your wish is going to be granted because I don't have time to take the flowers off again, or I don't take the time. I have to ask you something. You know I don't get paid for this channel. I just do it for fun. And how can, well let's, I have to show you the bane berry. Remember I talked about red berries in this area? How pretty they look in the shade? Bane berry or the common name is doll's eyes. So pretty kind of uh, coordinates with this uh, 
Persicaria, the red in the burgundy in that Persicaria, and then the beanberry adding the red to the garden too, next to the chartreuse. Okay, carry on about my conversation with myself. How can walking a garden of any type, unless it's really, really poor, give a thumbs down? I don't understand it. What kind of person hangs around giving thumbs down to nature? Don't get it. I mean, I don't care if you give me thumbs down or thumbs up, but I just wanted to know what kind of person can I find good in nature? Weird. Pretty, pretty, pretty sounds. I think this coneflower is mutated because it's so, so dry. And I know it's been raining for weeks on end. But our soil dries out really fast here. Oh, that bee bomb back there is doing exactly what I wanted it to do. Adding some red, and next year it should be taller and a bigger clump because we all know how aggressive it is. Isn't she pretty? Little of the flocks. Soon it'll be blooming a lot. The garden will be full of flocks. Some shorter than others because the deer have pruned for me. Another yucca. Starting to set flower. Valerian setting seed. And some butterfly weed right in here. Mm, the oaks are doing so good this year. They liked all the rain. Common ditch daylily. And that white Annabelle is my mother plant all over the property. It's come off of here, so she's smaller this year. She got whacked at a little too much. And then the pink plumes are uh, Queen of the Prairie. The deer help themselves to that too, but it's a really a runner, so you have to have space for it. Likeness is the red orange, and then the tick seed. This is one of my pretty, I really like this one. Um, Gloriosa Daisy. With whatever kind of bee that is. Oh, that milkweed is starting to smell really good. Remember I told you I was leaving quite a bit of it back in the garden there? Well, it's starting to bloom. And it's very fragrant. And yes, the monarchs have been around. 
A lot of dragonflies this year, too. We are bone dry under here. Can you see how the aggressive gorilla is weeping? Don't think it's going to die, though. A lot of shade, but this Gloriosa is still looking pretty for me. And remember, I propped it up with twigs so it doesn't fall down. Called it twigging. Now this spider wart over here gets a lot of shade, so we're letting it bloom for a while yet, probably for another week, 10 days. One lone Asiatic lily. Well, there's a couple more blooms on it. But again, I like that dash of white, and it should be more of a bigger plant but I'm not taking out the violets around it or the bee balm and it'll get choked out. Maybe I'll do it. Only so many hours in a day, right guys? And still have to keep up the house and cook. You ladies know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, let's go to the Garden of Eton. Artist is Jalen, my granddaughter. She made the pumpkin patch sign too, but no pumpkins this year. No bog garden, not too much of one. Ooh, the butterflies and the bees and the hummingbirds love this patch. And then a few tomatoes over here. Little sun, but I had them left over. More gloriosas peeking over the hoop house there. And yes, the hoop house is working out good, giving me clean greens. Meaning no... Uh, damaged by the white butterfly. I don't know if I'm going to get holy basil this year. Holy man, it isn't doing that good. No clue why. Celery. Oregano. A little orange here I wanted, so calendula is going to bloom. Peppermint, parsley, and of course some gloriosas. Dill all over the garden. I think I'll put some out at the uh, rummage sale this weekend. See if people need dill. Tomatoes are really taking off nicely. Peppers are starting to form peppers on them. And they'll do better as soon as we get this garlic out. I'd say another 10 days or so. Now, the beans got eaten once. So they're not as big as I wanted them to be. I want them to grow tall when the tomatoes were little. And then they'd get sun. So I don't know how they're gonna do this year. But we have tomatoes. Borage. Cilantro going to seed, and I planted some new stuff too. Nasturtiums. More peppers in front here. And then flowers in front, calendula, and then Buenos Aires.
That's exactly what I use my old bird cages for. There's rosemary in there. Lots of dill. A few cucumber beetles I found in there, but I pick them a couple times a day. I only found one yesterday. Try to put water in your garden, guys, even if it's on the ground, a saucer or a plate. The birds really appreciate it, and the insects, if it's shallow enough, real flat dish. So if I'm over here, I just put water in it. Some more green beans. I don't think my peas are going to amount to anything. They're supposed to be the puffy sugar snap, and they're getting, like, sucked in, so I take it. It's too hot for them. But the beans will take over. And the cucumbers are going to be guided up on top of this um, vining structure. It's an old gazebo. Carrots, some scallions or green onions, raspberries, doing okay. Lettuces, I'm letting go to seed, butter crunch. Let me see if it is bitter. Hmm, not bad. Butter crunch. And then I planted some more butter crunch down in here where it gets part shade. They're coming up. I marked on the calendar in a few weeks to start some more. More dill. And some, what, a cuke in there, I think. I think I threw a few beans in there, pull beans. And then on the other side, cucumbers. And hubby isn't going to like it if the cucumbers are looking yucky. And you can see that from the road. So I'm going to have to really keep up on taking off the fungus-type leaves. We'll walk down in the shade for a little bit. Beaver few. Most of my garden art I'm going to sell next year. Or right before we move. The chairs, those iron chairs, I wasn't using this year. I find containers too hard to keep watered, or too time-consuming. Not so hard, but time-consuming. Trumpet vine. I have harvested a couple um, blueberries, maybe half a cup. I have to check today. Can you see the tomatoes in there through all the twigs? <laughs> tomatoes and then uh, radishes I put in a container. This is in the loosestrife family. It had more of a burgundy leaf earlier in the season. So now it gets the yellow flower. It's called a uh, firecracker loosestrife. And that is a spreader also. Yarrow wild. Oh, one of my favorite. Take the leaves off. Chew them into a poultice, put it on uh, a bleeding wound, and it'll stop the bleeding. And I did use it. We're in the wild area now.
And on the other side of the path is the back of the hosta garden. I like how the light, that's why I put glass in the rotating sculptures, is the light shines through it during the day, makes it sparkle. Boat spirit all done. I think one day soon Roxanne and I are going to work on the shade garden. Get some of this jewel weed out of here. If you have a shade garden and can get keep it kind of moist, sedges like it, and this variegated lime green and green uh, stripe is pretty. So consider that. There is a variegated iris in there too I meant to take out. It's on my to-do list because it's not doing good with so much jewel weed around it. This is what we'll work on. The jewel weed is in among my uh, foam flower. And they're hanging in there. But they need to be showing some love, Lark. Give those little babies a love. The back of the fern garden. I think next week I'll be showing you this glowing gold area of the Ligularia. Another great shade plant. Now just because plants are in shade, they don't necessarily do good. You gotta give them water. Dry shade is really hard. Shade with good soil is a very nice garden. But most of us that have shade, uh, have dry shade under trees. The soil isn't as good. More hostas. Feverfew is starting to light up my shade area. And I think we'll be done for today. So take care, my gardening friends. I love having you visit. And come back, maybe on Thursday, for tips and techniques. Thank you for visiting.